There is something unsettlingly humiliating about losing a job and having to move back home that's harder than a lot of other life events, short of divorce or the death of a loved one. But it's also one that's uniquely relatable to a lot of millennials and Gen Z, and Tim Seeley and Tony Fleek's image comic Local Man, about a local boy done good, done bad, is both a love letter to early 90s image comics and a very clever look at how career setbacks in this modern era sometimes are the start of something bigger. This week, I'm reviewing Local Man at the behest of comedy friend uh, Dan Bublitz Jr. I'm Dan Umpton, and this is the Doomcast. First off, thanks a lot for watching. Do me a favor, hit subscribe and the bell. I make about one of these videos a week. They're all great, so please don't miss even one. Uh, Dan Bublitz Jr., one of my friends who was a uh, comedian and producer, uh, now based out of Colorado. Uh, I was at the North Carolina Comedy Festival with him and I got stuck in an airport. I asked for suggestions for writing the next few Doomcasts. Uh, and this was Dan Bublitz Jr.'s. Uh, by the way, if you're in Greensboro, North Carolina, or that area at all, go visit the Idiot Box Comedy Club. Uh, it's where the North Carolina Comedy Fest is, and it's great. It's dedicated to the craft of comedy. Uh, the folks that they get through are excellent, but especially during that North Carolina Comedy Festival. It's a real treat. Shout out to Jenny Stencil. Anyway, Local Man is Tim Seeley and Tony Fleek's collab project through Image Comics. Both of them giants in the indie and mainstream comics industry. Tim, of course, is a regular artist and writer for both DC and Marvel at different points. Uh, also the creator of Hack Slash and more. Also the artist behind a few beers by Three Floyds Brewing uh, out of Indiana. Tony Fleeks is an acclaimed artist, uh, creator who has done independent comics like In My Lifetime. He's earned critical acclaim for that as well as his work on My Little Pony. Uh, his creator-owned Stray Dog series is at once uplifting and riveting uh, and nail-biting. It's a mystery solved by captive dogs, almost like a dark Disney film and one of my favorite comic books of the last few years and also in the ultimate Midwest street cred, Tony Fleeks has done illustrations and artwork for none other than Taco John's. So, these guys have set this book in Wisconsin. They know the culture, the terrible, terrible drinking culture as well, I imagine. Local Man opens on disgraced hero Crossjack, a member of third gen, a former member. Uh, it's not entirely clear at first what Crossjack did to disgrace himself why he's so deeply unpopular, even in his hometown. But that's where Crossjack ended up. His real name is Jack Saver, uh, spelled with an X, and he's from Farmington, Wisconsin. The first arc sees him encounter his old ex-girlfriend Inga, his new cop husband Brian, and his old local arch nemesis, who is admittedly a little touched in the head since an accident, a guy who calls himself Hodag. So like I said, Jack is almost universally reviled in this town. Driving apps reject picking him up. Bars don't want him there. His parents don't want him there. Worse, the only person who will talk to him at length, his ex, Inga, her husband, is, like I said, the local sheriff. Hodag creates a scuffle in the bar that Jack finds himself, which results in Jack using a garbage can lid like a shield, just like his alter ego Cross Jack did. Jack's powers are basically that he can use any type of weapon proficiently and basically never misses. Sort of like a cross between Taskmaster and Bullseye at the same time. The difference is, is he never learned how to use and never could really use a bow, which comes into play eventually. Jack is almost immediately visited outside the bar after Hodag is arrested. Who shows up but most of the rest of 3rd Gen, a crew of wildcats looking 90s throwbacks telling him he has to cease and desist using his powers, and that's a violation uh, of his termination from third gen. Basically, that the identity of Crossjack is owned by that company. Jack begs Neon, a light manipulator, to tell everyone that his being fired was a mistake. Uh, and if you read on, you'll find out exactly why she can tell them, uh, but she and the rest of them walk away, rejecting him. While he returns to his parents, Hodag, is murdered inside of his prison cell. As it happens, Camo Crusader, the last remaining member of 3rd Gen, 
and a sometime mentor, in a way, to Cross Jack, shows up in Farmington looking for Jack as well. Now, the story blends a lot of themes together that really resonate with me as a Midwesterner who grew up in the 90s on a steady diet of extreme comics and uh, evangelical youth group. Beyond just the parody of early image, the questioning of life choices in early middle age, seeing old friends grow apart from you, seeing corporatism and careerism publicly screw job someone, and the overarching subtext of the complex relationship of traditional morality, violence, and Christianity are all getting dug into pretty deeply, but not too heavy-handedly. This is a real impressive aspect of well-written satire. One of the most unique storytelling features in Local Man is that they're classic image flip books with two stories cooperatively written by Fleeks and Seeley, uh, except that the main story on one end is penciled by Fleeks, while the 90s third gen backstory is penciled by Seeley. And the styles are deeply complementary as well. Uh, Seeley's command of the over-muscled, over-pouched, over-stylized 90s look and Fleek's warm, earnest, character-driven, grounded artwork, which isn't necessarily even his specialty, uh, on the main story, really work with a darkly comic script, um, especially with the backstory as well. They even did a gold crossover issue where Crossjack is part of, uh, or the Crossjack of the past teams up with other image creator-owned characters from things like a lot of disparate stuff from everything from Phil Hester's Fire Breather to Tom King and Elsa Charpentier's Love Everlasting, which is like those are <laughs> some reaches and it's pretty interesting. Now, I'm intentionally not ruining issues two, three, and four of this book because that's not what I do here. I talk about the stuff I like and why I like it, and I also avoid talking about the stuff that I don't like at all. I'm not not talking about that because I don't like what happens. I'm not telling you because I want you to also go spend your money on a good creator-owned book like this and have the same enjoyment that I got while reading it. Trust me, this where this goes, what Crossjack did to turn the whole world against him, it's both way less and way more messed up than you really think it might be in a number of different ways. Uh, and it's really set me up to be very excited for uh, th the rest of this book. It's my most anticipated creator-owned book any week that it comes out. Seriously, if you are a fan of comics, or of 90s cape shit, or absolutely hate 90s cape shit, or you have ever as a millennial or Gen Z found yourself back in your parents' house as an adult, this is a must-pull book. Thanks everybody for watching. This has been the Doomcast. See you next week.